and a half hours. This is the visibility which we get from our newly uh, constructed Cepreos ground station in Spain with Venus Express. And out of this money, uh, eight hours of uh, tracking time solely for data acquisition of scientific data which, uh, as we have shown, would satisfy the requirement of the scientific community in terms of terabit retrieved over one, uh, uh, say, over the nominal mission duration, which is two Venus uh, days. And our uh, thanks to Manfred, who has been really very, very helpful to us here, commentators, organizing this retransmission. Also in the master control room, we have Andrea Accomazzo, the spacecraft operations manager. He was formerly on the Rosetta mission. Today, very excited by the prospect of his spacecraft orbiting the Shepard star. I think I will try to relax as much as possible. I will try to get in very much confidence in my team, which is the most important thing for my job. And also, I will scroll back throughout the preparation phase we have went through in these two or three years we've spent with Venus Express and try to make sure that we have covered all the, all the points we had to cover. Already the experience of uh, thinking Mars Express, having Mars Express flying around Mars changed it two or three years ago. But now thinking that I have to fly a spacecraft with my team there to the Venus, to Venus is, is completely different perspective. And I believe the day will be around there. I will be looking at it every single day. Right, only a few minutes away from the liftoff of Venus Express, live from the Mission Control Center here in Darmstadt and from Baikonur, the status, Francois? So four minutes before the launch, everything is okay. The fregat is declared ready to launch. Uh, two minutes uh, 35 uh, seconds, uh, we will have the pressurization of the propellant tanks. Two minutes five seconds before the launch, the Soyuz will receive the lift of command. 45 seconds before the launch, we will have the transfer to the power onboard supply. Intermediate thrust pull. So during 20 seconds, 20 seconds, I repeat, the performance of the five engines will be analyzed uh, by the onboard computers, and if everything is nominal, we will see the liftoff. We will all see the liftoff, including the people in the master control room. Paolo, what are the main concerns at a moment like this for the flight teams? You can imagine at the moment uh, everything on the Baikonur side is in the hands of our stars and colleagues. On our side, we are uh, absolutely uh, concentrated on making the ground segment uh, always uh, green and keeping it green as it is. Um, we cannot do very much on the space cabin on the launcher. We have to wait for the first uh, moment, the first signal that will arrive in about two hours. And do you feel a bit helpless at this moment where everything is in the hands of the launch provider, the rocket? Yeah, of course we do. Uh, we can only start actually acting on the spacecraft when we get the signal at the end of the job of Starsen. And uh, in a way this is, uh, yeah, as you say, we feel a bit helpless. Right. Uh, a few minutes away from liftoff of the Soyuz launcher, will be tracked, uh, it will be tracked, Francois, by several downrange ground stations. Yes, except during a certain time between the two burns of the Fregat upper stage, the Soyuz launch vehicle and the Fregat upper stage will be in visibility of a lot, first of all, of Russian ground station and after that European one. Uh, this uh, ground station receives the launcher telemetry to analyze and evaluate a number of parameters. And uh, at the end of the Starsa mission, uh, these parameters will identify the instant of separation of the Venus Express payload. I suppose that all the pre-launch operations, the final count in Baikonur, are very much like uh, with Ariane in Kourou, that everything is computer controlled. Exact. Uh, at the end of the countdown, you have too many activities, tests to perform, it's the same as uh, IN-5. So all these uh, activities are achieved by uh, computers firstly on ground and verify again with computers on board on the Soyuz launch vehicle. And in parallel, we have also different teams located in different area in Baikonur, in Moscow, at Tempura Voshki, in TSSKB, Roscosmos, and also we have people at Nyevri in France. Right, I think we are extremely close to the launch. Let's uh, now sit back and watch the ascension. The towers fall back. Let's watch the liftoff.
Right, our Soryuz vehicle lifting off and practically only eight seconds after takeoff is already arcing out over towards the northeast, over the Kazakhstan desert. So uh, you you see you see, you see that is a takeoff. If the weather is with us, I hope uh, we will have the chance to see in line the separation of the four boosters from the lift off to the separation through the coast phase between the two frigate burns. The trajectory of the flight follows an orbit inclination of 51 degree 57. So during the first two minutes, it's the beginning of the ascent phase performed by the four boosters and the central core. The central core and the four boosters are similar in construction and are powered by liquid oxygen and kerosene. And each engine has four combustion chambers. And following liftoff, the boosters burn for 180 seconds, so around two minutes, and are then discarded. And I understand that everything is nominal up to now. And we can still see visually the, the launcher. We should be able to see, despite that thin uh, cloud cover, we should be able to see the uh, separation of the boosters. You'll also have independent confirmation. No, we're disappearing into the cloud deck get the cameras to focus in there, see as far as possible. The weather has been fairly clement in Baikonur these past few days and the rollout was under perfect conditions, but it's clouded over a bit. We have the confirmation of the separation of the four boosters. Right, uh, very nice. Uh, first step, uh, so far so good. Uh, we'll be having throughout the remainder of this flight uh, a visualization of the uh, tracking of this uh, launcher. This is from real telemetry. All parameters are nominal. Uh, this visualization is from data that's sent back in real time from the launcher and visualized here on the system that we have here at ESOC, provided for us by our colleagues from StarSim. This visualization shows the ground track of the launcher. We perhaps can... All parameters are nominal up to now. We can perhaps mention a few of the uh, areas that will be overflown by the Soyuz. So now on the screen uh, you can see the evolution of the main parameters from the Soyuz launch vehicle. There are real data such as altitude, velocity and attitude of the Soyuz launch vehicle and the launcher is being followed by radars not only in Baikonur at Imki near Moscow at Barnaul and Krasnoyarsk uh, the flight will as you see this red uh, track arcing out uh, north eastwards will be flying over uh, northern Japan and then going down over the uh, Pacific everything is uh, working normally Exactly, everything is working normally. The uh, stages uh, that drop off, the boosters for example, uh, where do they land, where do they drop, into what regions? Uh, usually uh, we have a, a separation on to a dedicated area and the drop of uh, are performed to this type of dedicated area. So the day of the launch, uh, these uh, area are prohibited, so everything is safe. The next step should be the separation of the fairing. We'll uh, tell you when we have confirmation of that immediately. This is the protective shroud at the summit of the launcher under which uh, is placed uh, not only our Venus Express uh, satellite but also the fregat upper stage. As the confirmation of the jettison of the fairing, it's important to understand that the Soyuz has two types of fairing. Uh, for this launch, uh, we are using the fairing S type, which is a small one and was used for the Mars Express launch. I think you remember this wonderful Mars Express. I understood also that uh, just now we have the ignition of the first stage, the second stage core cutoff, and the separation of the two stages. So now we are at around 150 kilometers with a speed of 4,200 meters per second. 
The third stage is using an RD0110 engine with also four combustion chamber as four vernier nozzle which provide uh, three axis flight uh, control and this uh, first stage will uh, nominally burn for around 240 seconds. Right, we mentioned that the stages separate. Uh, are there pyrotechnic devices which sever the different uh, parts or is it just the additional thrust when one stage ignites? Yes, uh, it's a completely different compared to uh, RN5, for example. There are no uh, pyrotechnic devices to separate the two stages, uh, and the third stage engine stress directly separates the stage from the central core. Uh, and now all parameters are nominal. Right, uh, another focus now on the mission, the science focus, to better understand the surface and the inner composition, Olivier, of the planet. Yes, the surface on Venus is very difficult to study because of the thick uh, cloud layer. Uh, however, the, and there was a big achievement of the NASA Magellan mission in the 90s was to map the, the surface with the uh, radar. And this data gave us some altitude and topographic information and we discovered some volcanoes, some uh, mountains, some canyons and other very interesting features. And the surface appears to be extremely young and the key question is, is Venus still ge geologically active? That's one of the questions that Venus Express should help answering by notably measuring the surface temperature to see if there are some active volcanoes, for example. And for sure we will not be able to, to, to take images and for sure we will not be able to detect ice and the main mission to Venus will be extremely difficult. Right, and during uh, those few words uh, I've been getting continuous thumbs up signals from Francois. I have to say that everything is uh, nominal. Let's uh, check with Paolo. How do you feel at this moment seeing the launcher on its way? Well, uh, you know, we are all always uh, very, very much uh, uh, under tension in this period. Uh, we're waiting for a first signal and uh, we basically have two teams, the ground team that still is very busy in checking that the ground stations will be ready to receive the signal. The spacecraft related team um, can even leave the room very soon because we will we'll only start the work after the first acquisition of signal. Uh, Manfred a few moments ago mentioned the Cebreros station in Spain, the new station. This will play a, a really vital role for this mission. Paolo. It's a very important uh, new station for us. It's the second deep space antenna that we have uh, after the one in New North in Australia. And uh, it's also important for Venus because uh, being uh, on, the, on the right side of the Earth will allow us to control the spacecraft during normal working days. Good, right. The next step, I believe, Francois, will be the third stage uh, cutoff. We're fast approaching that time. Exactly, we are waiting for this uh, confirmation. And uh, once that has separated, we are left with what the Russians term uh, the, the, the nose module. What is that? Yes, uh, the nose module is constituted by the frigate uh, upper stage and uh, the Venus uh, Express spacecraft. I just received the confirmation of the cutoff of the third stage and separation of the nose module, so it means the Fregat plus the Venice Express spacecraft. And in so now Fregat and Venice Express are at an altitude of around 190 kilometers with a speed of 7,750 uh, 7, uh, meters per second. So uh, now it's uh, the beginning of the activity of the frigate upper stage and uh, we are waiting for its uh, ignition. Right, and this stage is a relatively recent uh, but very well qualified improvement to the launcher, the frigate. Yes, um, uh, the qualification of the frigate upper stage uh, was in 2000. The frigate upper stage is an uh, autonomous and versatile upper stage as, that is designed to operate as an orbital vehicle. It can be restarted 20 times in flight to perform uh, some complex mission profile as uh, today. And uh, we will very shortly be getting confirmation through you and through the data that is being received of the ignition. It's a very short burn for this first burn.